This is the twelfth and likely final video in the series on setting up a character to use Human IK in Maya 2012. I'm not going to get into actually making animations uh, using this system, but I do want to go over how the control rig works itself. So uh, there's going to be a lot of overlap in what I cover, but I'm going to try to cover this in a in a way that makes sense as just progressing through the interface that we have over here. Um, so there will be some overlap, and um, if I jump ahead I'll, I'll come back to wherever I was. So the first thing is what controls do you actually have? Uh, these are your um, different display modes so I'm just going to start with just the red one on. So this is your IK control system which is inverse kinematics and what that means basically is it's a sort of a goal oriented system where you say I grab this controller here and I say well I want this controller to be over here um, at my next frame so then I just grab that and move it over here. And if it was closer to the body, uh, Maya would then bend the joints to accommodate where you wanted to put that um, control. So um, that's why it's called inverse, because you use sort of the outside part of the joint chain. And the system interpolates how the, um, the other joints up the chain should work. So in this case, it will rotate the shoulder and the elbow to accommodate what I'm trying to do um, with placing this in the scene. Uh, so that's inverse kinematics. And um, I'm going to go go back to the stance pose, which is under the blue button control rig stance pose. That'll just send him right back to his default pose. Um, and then the yellow thing here, this is uh, an FK skeleton uh, that's been added that this drives your actual skeleton. So this works just like your regular skeleton uh, did that you've already seen, except this interoperates with the IK system. And that's why this is here as another level of abstraction. So this one you can just move around from joint to joint um, as you've been doing when you're doing your waiting. So again, I'll go back to stance pose. Uh, there are a lot of ins and outs of why you would use IK and FK, but just to boil it down and keep it really simple right now, if you need um, a, a joint or a joint chain to stay in one position. Let's say, for instance, the character is leaning on a table and his right hand's on the table, and you want that to main that, maintain that position. You want to use IK uh, solution to make that happen. Otherwise, you got to go in with your FK curves and adjust them all, basically every key and oftentimes down to the frame to keep things where you want them. So use IK and it just locks it into place, which is why by default your character is using IK and it's pinned, and again I'll come back to this in just a minute, so that the IK is the dominant source on that part of the body. So legs typically typically are going to use IK, uh, the rest of the body uh, oftentimes will use FK interpolation. And that is actually how the human IK system comes set up. So this third little button, the white stick figure, this is your actual skeleton. If you wanted to display that you can turn it on here. Typically though you're going to have this on with you know your FK skeleton and your IK uh, controllers here. And if you don't see this like this, it's basically just shading and X-ray joints is turned on. Now if, if yours like mine, um, basically everything is inside because I have this kind of thick character. Um, so turning X-ray joints on allows me to see everything, but if I wanted to see this with a little bit more clarity, uh, what I could do is uh, go up under the blue button here and choose Add to Selection IK, and that'll just select all my IK controllers. Then you can go to the channel box and grab the uh, radius here, just left click on that, and then middle click and drag in the viewport. And that'll use virtual sliders to make those larger so you can actually see what you're doing. And these might be a little extreme, but um, you get the you get the point of how to do it. Okay, I'll go back to character controls, and I'll just cover another couple quick things that um, that you do with this system. So as I move this arm around, this little blue null object right here, this is called a pole vector control. And as I move that around, um, it will control actually how the elbow is oriented. In this case, I don't have anything pinned, so it's a little bit odd to see exactly what that's doing. So let me just do this on the leg. I'll just move this up so I have a bend in the knee and I'll grab this controller and as I move this around you can see this is just adjusting where that joint chain is uh, is looking. So that's how you use a pull vector control. These um, red versions out here on the fingers and you would have them if you had toes on your character um, you can use as IK controllers uh, just moving them around. You can also um, do rotations on them and just create a fist um, out of that, 
and that's a pretty crummy looking fist but um, let me just uh, go back to the stance pose real quick and uh, do that again just from here uh, and this is common to run into a little uh, glitch area there and you just have to um, keep bringing it down a little bit and that looks like it's losing uh, quite a bit of volume in the way that it's being interpolated and again when you paint skin weights you're just guessing at um, what your control rig is actually going to look like um, as far as what the interpolation is um, you, you can make pretty good guesses it's not like you're shooting in the dark or something like that but um, the way this fist comes together here might use slightly different angles in terms of you know maybe I didn't expect this one to come in quite this much and maybe I expected the difference between these two joints to be a little bit more extreme so at any rate um, you can come back and paint at any time uh, and and oftentimes you'll need to because your control rig might move in ways that you didn't exactly expect when you're doing your weighting so you can always come back and, and touch up paints no problem at all it doesn't matter if the control rigs on it or anything like that you can just paint um, paint weights whenever you need to so I'll go back to the stance pose one more time here and now that I've covered the basics of these controls uh, I'm gonna cover the next three um, icons here the first one is full body which basically means if you grab an IK control and you move it your whole character will try to interpolate uh, to accommodate what you're doing with that um, that IK control so as you can see I got the whole body to move just then with one single move and then if I key this again I have full body selected press S even though I only have the wrist effector selected it keyed 246 channels which basically means it's keying all of the IK and FK controllers here um, on this on this frame to keep to, uh, keep sync between the two systems then if I moved over to so let's say frame 12 and I move this up and sort of pull his body back up to uh, up right here and I'll just sort of get a basic thing happening okay so that's gonna tank him out a little bit uh, but I'll go ahead and, and key that again I have one single thing selected press S 246 channels keyed which means I've now keyed the entire body just by moving a couple controllers and um, and placing two keys so it's a pretty cool system you can really get a lot of um, a lot of action at a very little uh, motion so um, that's one thing to note uh, when you use the full body mode as you pull the character um, it will affect everything up to a place where it's pinned uh, which I'll get into in just a minute and when you key, you, if you have the full body um, selected up here, it will key the full body. Uh, another cool thing about this is, in order to delete those keys, um, I can don't have to go back and select everything. I can just uh, make a selection in the time slider by shift, left click, and drag. That makes that selection in the timeline. And then I would delete. But you saw those, the, the um, selection just disappear there. This, I don't know, may be just a quirk of the PC version. I notice this doesn't happen on the Mac. It may be a hot fix, um, but at any rate, this is what my system's doing. And the way to get around that is just use middle click because middle click moves the time slider without updating the viewport. So shift, middle click, drag. That gives you a selection that then you can do whatever you want with. In this case, I'm just going to right click, choose delete. And even though I only had one of the controllers selected, it killed that for everything so basically there are no keys left at this point and I could have done that on a, on a small subset of the um, keys that I had or whatever but it's just good to know that when you do that delete in full body it's gonna wipe out everything no matter what your selection is so again I'm gonna go back to the stance pose now the other mode here um, the body part mode means basically it's only gonna affect what turns white here so notice in full body everything turns white which means they would all potentially be influenced by what you do. Um, with this, I can see that it's going to limit it to the shoulder. So now if I grab the wrist and move it around, it'll behave a lot more like what you expect an IK chain to do, um, a non a full body IK chain, that is. So this is probably what you've seen in other control rigs if you've used other control rigs. And incidentally, when you key, it's just going to key this um, body part. So I'll press S here go to frame 12 move that down um, press S and notice that it's only keying 66 channels so the rest of the body is not actually keyed 
So if I were to select another controller like this, notice there are no keys at all. So it's only keying this one segment here. And same thing goes when you're doing the delete through this um, section. Again, it's going to be a middle click uh, drag, uh, shift drag rather, middle click shift drag, and then choose delete. And again, that's only going to delete the sort of white cells over here. So now everything should have its keys removed. These never had keys, so we're back in business, no keys at all. Uh, this last one is just the selection. Uh, I typically haven't found this very useful, but what it does is it only keys um, the single, the one controller that you have selected. And I, I've had some problems with this, so I would probably recommend just sticking with these. If somebody knows uh, of a really good example of why or where, uh, feel free to post that in the comments. I'd appreciate knowing that myself. Um, okay, so but for now, uh, full body and body part tend to be the, the modes that um, are the most useful. Now these next series here are for pinning. And I'm just going to stay in full body so that I can show you how this works. If I grab the hips controller, everything that's not pinned is going to move with this. So notice the feet are staying wherever, um, wherever they were because they're pinned in translation and rotation. Um, and so that's basically what uh, pinning does is you just say um, to Maya, hold this position as I am interactively moving you around. So I'm going to go ahead and talk about these reach uh, values as well at the same time. So pinning this T and R that you see here uh, means it's pinned in translation and it's pinned in rotation. And if I select a cell, I can actually see the icons will change up here and I can see T and R in here. But as well, it has reach translation and reach rotation. So this is uh, can be a point of confusion in using this rig. Basically, these pins are for when you're posing your character. As you're trying to create a position, you're using pinning to make the character stay or move however you want it to. But when it's being interpolated through playback, it's looking at the reach translation and rotation. It doesn't really care about your pinning. Um, so they have a common sort of feel, but they don't do exactly the same thing. Pinning is just going to say, leave this uh, wherever it is in rotation or translation as you're moving a character into position. But then as it's interpolating, it's going to look here. And if reach translation is on 1, it's going to follow the IK control. And if it's on 0, it'll follow the FK um, rig. And I'll show you uh, an example of that in just a moment. So uh, at any rate, if I wanted to move the whole body uh, around, but um, let's say not move from the hips. Then I could select the hips and turn on reach translate and uh, I'm sorry pin uh, on uh, translate and rotate. Again you just click both those buttons there. Then if I were to grab the wrist here and move this now instead of the hips coming along for the ride uh, they don't because they're pinned. And I could do the same thing let's say for instance in the chest area I could lock that down and this would then work more like the uh, more like the body part mode except for when I key it's still going to key everything. I'm going to go back to stance pose here. So pinning on translate and rotate just allows you to lock your character down so it doesn't move in an unintended way. Uh, and again that is for interactive as you're posing your character that's when the pinning actually comes into effect. So the reach, uh, I'll just do an example over here by just moving this arm up and down. So I'll just, uh, actually I'm going to go ahead and do this in um, body part mode. I'm just going to move this up, set a key, and then go to somewhere around here, 12, pull it down, and set another key. Okay, so typically if you're using IK, as I mentioned this before, your character would interpolate in a, in a linear way. Basically it's going to follow this um, straight down. Watch how the, the selected object moves. It just moves straight down because that's that's what it's doing. It's following a linear path. But look how the arm is arcing. That's following an FK path. So the reason for that is the reach values that, that are on over here. So if you wanted the arm to follow an IK path really specifically, you could turn on reach translation and reach rotation. And now as I move this, um, it's going to follow that controller instead of following the FK. Um, so let me go ahead and turn off uh, actually joints just so this is really clear. So now with reach turned on, notice that it's staying with 
this controller and it's bending the elbow and the wrist is staying flat out. Uh, so that's a very different interpolation than this one which is going to follow the FK or the yellow uh, rig. So now see how the elbow doesn't bend. It just moves a smooth arc down from top to bottom. Typically this is what you want in your interpolation which is why this is the default for the, the human IK system. Typically you want um, really nice arcs out of your uh, interpolations. You don't want to move an arm straight up and straight down and bend the elbow to, to accommodate. You want to follow a nice smooth, uh, nice smooth path. So uh, another way to, to show this is if I just turn on uh, my reach translation here, then you can see how much different that is yet. So that's just staying with the IK controller in, in translation only. It's not looking at rotation. It's just following the translation of that. Um, and then you see it's a, it's a really different interpolation. So again, I'll turn that back off just to show the difference. And then both on. So it's a really big difference in, uh, in the way this thing moves. So you do have full control over which um, control rig your character is following at any point in time using these reach translation and rotation values. Okay, this is getting on uh, kind of long and, and um, I don't want to spend forever doing this. There's one other thing though that I wanted to hit um, just as, a, as another common thing that's needed in, uh, in the human IK system. And that is an alternative pivot. So for instance, if I wanted to animate my character tapping his toe, see how the heel is moving around? Um, this is obviously not a good control rig for that, uh, that sort of motion. Um, so what I need to do is I need to add a new pivot point down here to do that interpolation from. Um, so what I would do is I would just right click on the cell that I wanted to affect. In this case it is the ankle IK. I'm going to create a pivot effector. And then I'll give me uh, a little pop out right here. And this is the uh, pivot control right here. And if you try to move that, it's going to try to move your, uh, your character. So you don't want to do that. You want to move the pivot point of that. So again, you can hold the D key and move that. And it doesn't make any change to you. Um, the actual position of your character at all. And now I've added a position that is at the heel to pivot on. So I'll go back to my uh, textured view. And now if I were to uh, do uh, rotation on this, it's going gonna, it's gonna, to um, pivot based on that heel. So now I can make that toe tap happen really easily. And in this case, like my character's sort of got these really stupid proportions. So I get a lot of uh, knee bounce out of this as well. But this is now just using that heel pivot point. And to get back to that, you can just come up here and um, select the cell um, from here or deselect it. And then if you have a bunch, you might have, you know, 10 different uh, pivot points in here. Um, you know, uh, you can select them uh, through this submenu that you can pop up. Um, so that's the basics of using uh, the control rig. Um, this pull control, just so I mentioned this, is basically a way that you can wait what your IK system is following when it's in full body mode and you have reach translation and rotation on, uh, you can say follow the wrist with more dominance by adding more pull value to that than you know other um, uh, other controllers have. So this is sort of a way to drive your your full body towards a particular goal or target. Um, so that's the basics of of using this system. Uh, again, I'm not going to get into doing uh, animation, but if you think I've let anything out, um, you know, just you can drop me a comment and I'll happily do an another video to add on to this.